Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, it's Potato Phil and we have another video for you today. We're looking at Americans that are living abroad and their reactions when for the first time they realize that America has messed up. It's a bunch of TikTok clips and experiences from people I if guess. If you're an American currently go. living abroad, what is one time that made you realize that America really... So I've been living in New Zealand for the last four years. New Zealand's and at awesome. work there was an American flag. And I jokingly went and put my hand over my heart and said the Pledge of Allegiance and everyone was kind of like... So she was at work and she saw an American flag and her first instinct was, oh, there's an American flag. I have to put my hand over my heart and say the Pledge of Allegiance. Like, that's a little funny. What is that? Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's a, it's a Pledge of Allegiance. So basically growing up every it's day at school at like nine o'clock or whatever, we would all stand up and the whole class would recite the Pledge of Allegiance with our hands over our hearts. That is how patriotics are being bred, I think. Every morning at nine o'clock, like elementary school, think of it, you go there five, six years old and then you have to do that from when you're a child. Like that is a little bit brainwashy in my opinion. To the American flag in the corner of the room. And my coworkers were like, what? <laughs> you know, when you say it out loud, it sounds a bit culty. Yeah, exactly. It sounds a bit culty. I remember as a kid, I went to a Christian Catholic school and uh, I think once a week we had to pray in the morning. And uh, thinking back of that now, that is frightening to me how adults set these repetitive things up for children to do every day so um yeah i mean america is full of patriotics it's a very proud country of the country and i think it's weird to be proud of where you're from but yeah the flag is in high standards and stuff so a little culty i have to agree if you're an american currently living abroad what is one time that made you realize that america really so when I was in high school, I was a lifeguard, and during my lifeguard training, they taught us that before we even administer first aid or CPR, we had to ask for consent to avoid being sued. Now fast forward a couple of years, and I'm in London as a waitress, and my company sends me to go do CPR training. Yeah, hold okay. on. there, they go over the same stuff that I learned in the States, but I noticed that they're completely glossing over this one particular area. Yeah, yeah, asking for uh, consent. Dude, imagine just somebody is like dying there and you're like, all right, I'm gonna rescue you, but I need your consent for this, you know? I don't wanna just touch you or put my lips on your lips, so hello. And people around are probably thinking, what the hell is happening? Like, I, I can't do it, you know? What if, if he wakes up and then just sues me for, I don't know, touching me? Like you're trying to rescue a probably unconscious person, like from suffocating. So I raise my hand and I ask, uh, what are the laws here? Like, how do you avoid being sued if something goes yeah, wrong? Yeah, dude. If you sue somebody because they kind of saved your life. To which every single person in the room starts laughing at me. It says, oh, you're American, right? Yeah, no one here is going to sue you for trying to save their life. Why do Americans you have to sue for living abroad, What is one time that made you realize that America really met? So uh, in the U.S., I, I regularly get pneumonia. Sometimes I get like pneumonia and bronchitis, but pretty much all, you know, like clock, clockwork, I get it. Um, I had just moved to Scotland for my master's and I was coming down with a respiratory infection like I do every year. It was just the early onset of pneumonia, all but right. like normally I wait yeah, to I the point to the of where I'm like literally unable to breathe before I go to the doctor because it's expensive in the U.S. Well, here I was it's like, not. you know what, I'm here. I paid for the NHS. Let me, let me go get it. Saw a doctor, gave me a prescription. I went to the pharmacy to pick up my medication. Something that I literally would not be able to afford with my minimum wage job and being a full-time student. They gave it to me for free because it was necessary and I yes. almost cried in the pharmacy. <laughs> like tears were welling in my eyes. Dude, you're being helped by the medical system that is set in place by a country to help sick people, so that should not be a surprise. This one time that made you realize that America really messed you up. Okay, okay, so I live in New York now, but I used to live in England, and one time I was out at this bar with my friends, and these two cops walked by. And one of my friends was like, oh, I wonder why there are cops out right now. And I looked at the cops, and I got really confused, and I was like, those are cops? And my friends were like, yeah. Why? And I was like, they're not, they don't have guns. 
And everyone was like, they don't? Why, why would they have guns? They were like so aghast at that question. And I was realized in that moment that, and learned that guns, there are so few guns in the UK and it's such not an issue that like the everyday cop does not carry a gun. Is that true? I'm not sure. I lived in the UK for a year. Uh, did they not have guns? Like in Germany, they have guns. And in most European countries, I think they have guns. I think in general, cops in Europe are a little more chill than in the US. So it sounds like you just have to be afraid a little bit of the cops in the US. Cops here also don't have more rights than you. Like I could go up to a cop and be like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Parking there. So, you know, and they wouldn't like <laughs> pin me to the ground. And I was just, there are houses in America that have seen more guns in them than a fresh vegetable. Yep, that's funny. It blew my fucking mind. I think about it all the time. I hate guns so much. I hate guns so much. Yeah, I can totally relate to that guy. I mean, he moved back to New York, but, um, and I can totally see why people are afraid of that, especially just hearing all these news from the US. If you're an American currently living abroad, what is one time that made you realize that America really in the US, I could not let my 11 year old son go outside and play by himself. Someone would call the cops or something would legitimately happen to him. Why? And so there was no way. Something would legitimately happen to him. Like what would happen to him if you play outside? Like too much fresh air, too much fun. And when I moved to Germany, my husband, who's a German national, suggested that he go outside and play by himself. <laughs> yeah. We would not have to worry. Dude. Kids need to go on the streets. They don't need to go off the streets. Like everybody growing up in Germany heard that from their mother. Go play outside, you know? Go ride your bike. Go dig in the sand. Go in the woods and build a shelter. <laughs> that's what we did as kids. Like that, that sentence, go play outside, is so normal. I don't know what neighborhood she lives in, what area. I'm, 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 I'm assuming there are neighborhoods where it's more dangerous. If you're an American currently living abroad, what is one time that made you realize that America really- So I didn't realize this until I moved abroad, but Americans have a very strange concept of freedom. Freedom, Like yeah. when you're growing up, you're always told that America is such an amazing place and you know, it's the land of the free, home of the brave, but- yes. um, like, I keep hearing these criticisms from people like, oh yeah, but America has the most freedom. Whoa, yeah, freedom. That sounds like every internet troll's uh, voice I picture in my head. I mean, there may be a few exceptions or nuances, but in the UK, you're still free. Like, that is the biggest lie that Americans are ever told, that there aren't other free places. Like, I just don't, I don't understand. What, what does she mean? Do, do people, in, there, are there people in America that think Europe or the UK is not free. I don't understand what they mean by free. Not free to walk around, to go wherever you want, not free to voice your opinion, because that is like basic rights, I think. And America is like, yeah, we're so free. I always hear that argument when people don't have to pay that high taxes or health insurance, like, yeah, we're free to do that. But look what it brings you. It's not, it's not that great. I don't, I don't understand this freedom stuff. I think it uh, goes hand in hand with like, how you're being raised and doing the Pledge of Allegiance at nine o'clock in the morning. I see that America has a lot of freedoms and that Europe and Germany in special, uh, especially has a lot of over-regulations, a lot of rules, but this uh, general freedom thing... And mm, if I'm being mm, perfectly honest, I feel like the concept is kind of destroying American democracy. How ironic. Like, they need to kind of understand that they need to work on things to make themselves better and more free for their citizens. Yeah, I guess she has a point. I, I'm not a political expert, but over the last couple of years, all this like, yeah, we're free. And then it's just like divide, divide after divide. And it's not, it's not great. American currently living abroad. What is one time that made you realize that America really messed you up? Okay, so I'm not currently living abroad, but I did live in Australia for a few months. And one Australia. night while I was there, nice. I got a little bit too crazy and I ended up on public transportation she... without a phone um, and I had to find my way back to... So what she's saying is she got so drunk, she lost her phone already and tried to go home using public transportation somewhere in the night. My apartment and I got lost um, and yeah, while yeah, I happens. got off the tram to get onto a different tram to take me home, mm -hmm. 
um, a like middle-aged gentleman came up to me and I immediately went into attack mode and I was like going to kill him. Why? And he was like, no, no, no. I was just going to tell you which tram to take to get back to Preston. Mm -hmm. So as an American, you think immediate danger, like, okay, I, I get it. You're trying to be aware, but you, you think there's a man, a man would automatically like try to do stuff to you. Is that what and that saying? was when I realized that in Australia, I didn't need to be afraid. Like, granted, take precautions, but I didn't need to be afraid of every man. You don't need, need to be afraid of it. She's, so she's saying, in America, you need to be afraid of every man. Like, what are American men doing? Like, what's, what's good over there? But in America, I still am. Ah. Well, that's a weird, but a bit of a weird statement. If you're an American currently living abroad, what is one time that made you realize that America... So, I don't live abroad anymore, but for half of 2018, I lived in Germany, and I have so many stories. The town that I lived in had, like, a main plaza area, uh -huh. and there was a cafe in that plaza, so a couple of my other American friends and I decided to try it out one day, and there was a construction site nearby. We heard a really loud bang, and, you know... She thought it's a gunshot, right? Oh, we kind of assumed that someone had fired a gun, and so we like. That's the first cover, thing that comes we to mind. Oh my god! Frantically trying to find like a place that we could run to or hide to get out of the situation, and <laughs> then we dive realized under the that no one had shot a gun. No, it was a loud bang from the construction site. Yeah. That's it. That's all it was. Dude, that's so funny. That happened to uh, Deanna when we were here for the first time. So we hear something like, pum, pum. I don't know, something fell or whatever it is. And she's like, what was that? Is somebody shooting a gun? I'm like, huh? Like that concept to think, uh, the, the immediate thought being somebody might have shot a gun. Like there's a shootout going on. That is so uh, not in our heads. Like. I hear loud bangs and it might be fireworks, might be some shit falling and most of the time people are just annoyed like oh, all this noise over here. But yeah, it's not like gunfights are happening English, everywhere. We all have really obvious American accents. So all the Germans around us gave us these really sad looks like, oh, these poor, poor Americans. <sighs> Yeah, I get it. Uh, I, I want to know, is that something um, you get trained or you get taught at uh, elementary school that if you hear that, you might look for shelter or safety, uh, maybe, you know? American currently living abroad, what is... It's also one of these things, if I, if I hear that, it sounds like in America there's shootings everywhere and uh, it's probably not. One time that made you realize that America really messed you... Okay, so I moved to Sweden. And when I got here, I wasn't feeling too well, so I went to the doctor. Oh my god, she seems very American to me. Like the, the energy I get, like Cali girl vibes. And the doctor recommended that I get an EKG, an electrocardiogram. Now, instead of worrying about my health, my first reaction was, um, I'm sorry, I don't know if I can get one of those, because I don't know if I'm going to be able to afford it. And this sweet little man, it's free. This sweet, amazing doctor, goes, um, did you not, did you not pay the like twenty dollars when you got here um i ended up getting a ek like a regular ekg a 24 hour long ekg a blood test and a freaking checkup for twenty dollars that's part of this entire situation is is that i am getting better and i am getting the medical attention i need without going broke yeah so i, I think we're going down this like stereotypical uh Things everybody talks about in America. America, healthcare is not free, and then you come to Europe or whatever, and uh, like, oh my God, it's covered. So yeah, it's mind-boggling to <laughs> some people. Uh, I think it should be covered. It's it's very unhealthy living if you have to weigh between your well-being and being financially ruined for a lot of things, and that is one of the biggest reasons not to move to America uh, for me. Yeah, I don't know. It's like we're well, going on this road. It's like there's patriotism, there's free health insurance. I get it. That America really messed you up. I pride myself on being an American. I didn't make it out before COVID, but I went to Norway and I fell in love with Norway. I read about it, researched it, and I was like, I've got to visit Norway. first. And Horrible I only went country. for a week. Ugly landscape. And it was for the Infernal Metal Festival, and for the first time in my life, festivals. Ooh, I was actually dangerous. called an American. Okay. I didn't assume where I was from, and there was this beautiful Norwegian elder. Oh. She says, "Go paska," and I said, "Betlager, jeg lit norsk," and I said, basically, she said, "Happy Easter," and I said, "I'm sorry, I don't speak a lot of Norwegian," and she goes, "Oh, you're an American," and she didn't worry about her purse. She didn't 
look at me sideways and I cried. I cried when I left because for the first time I was able to be just an American. I didn't even hardly drink, didn't do anything crazy. Oh, get it, dude. All right, yeah, there are places in the world that are not fucking racist, that are not fucking discriminating. So she being a person of color uh, in America, my wife has the same issue. She's uh, half Asian, so a lot of people ask her always, where are you from? And she's like, I'm from fucking South Carolina. I was born in Florida. I'm American. But no, people see the Asian and they're like, but where are you really from, you know? That's an issue for a lot of minorities, I guess, because they never really feel 100% belonging to America. But then also, if you have Asian ancestries, if you go over there, you're not looked at as one of them because uh, then you are the American. So you never really fully like 100% belonging to either group. And yeah, that's a little unfortunate. And I guess her story, I didn't get it at first, was like in Norway, she was just approached as like, oh, you're American, cool. And not like, but where are you really from? Like, are you African or some bullshit like that? Oh my God, that's cool. If you're an American currently living abroad, what is one time that made you realize that America really- So during the first lockdown, um, we have an elderly neighbor and we would go and check in on her every once in a while and like get her groceries if she needed. And progressively she started not be able to breathe very well. And we knew it wasn't COVID cause she had it before. But like at one point it was like she couldn't even get to the door without like literally not being able to breathe and having to sit down. So my partner decided that we needed to call an ambulance for yeah. her and get her to the hospital pronto. And when he told me that he was going to call an ambulance, the first thing that I said was, are you sure? I, can she afford an it's ambulance? It's free. Like, we, we could just drive her. And it wasn't until my partner You can call him as much as you want. There's not a limit. And that it clicked that, oh, that's not a worry here. And yeah. then I went upstairs and cried because it really smacked me in the face that as a Imagine man somebody had an actual emergency in their apartment and they're about to die and you can't call an ambulance because of money reasons. They're just supposed to decay there. Like what? Americans, we are conditioned to not worry about someone's health first, but to worry about whether or not they can financially afford to see a doctor yeah. and get help. An American currently living abroad, Fuck what is that. one time that made you realize that America really messed you? So I moved to Germany in 2018 as a study abroad student. Why is everybody moving to Germany? Nice apartment that was on the ground floor. Go to a country with a nice of sunshine, patio, a big Spain, door that opened that Greece, the patio. Italy. And I was minding my own business in bed one day. The door was wide open. I had my noise canceling headphones on and I heard these really loud banging noises coming from outside that weren't very far. And I'm like, that's not a firework or a firecracker. It can't be. I freak out because as an American, I'm like, I'm about to get shot. Somebody is shooting up all of the student apartments right now. So I call all of my friends and I'm like, did you hear that? Am I crazy? Do we need to call the police and whatever? And they're like, I don't know, but yeah, maybe call your boyfriend who's German and like ask him. So I call my boyfriend and I'm like, Martin, we just heard this stuff. Like, what's going on? And he's like, not to worry. And Martin Germany, is like, we don't have shooters. no, so probably just firecrackers. And I'm just like, I'm damaged. Like, we are all damaged and freaking out about freaking firecrackers. We think we're going to get shot up. God, what is one time that made you realize that America really messed you up? Hey, I live in Ireland and I've lived most of my adult Ireland. life here. Irish. I moved to Ireland in 1995. My teenage daughter was born here many years ago, and when she was born, I spent two nights in hospital before she was born. I had an emergency cesarean section, and then I spent a further six nights afterwards. The total cost to me was zero. Yes, instead of $80,000 like, in the US, sure no it was zero my credit card? Like, in Ireland. Do you want my Ireland. details so you can send me the bill? And they <laughs> do she know on my credit card? Like. It's right here. You just did that for me. Yeah. You just, I, we just produced a kit together, but oh, now nah, we're good. Like, we're just like, it's on the laugh, house. like, oh, you're American. There's no bill. So eight nights in hospital, emergency procedure, zero bill. American currently living abroad. What is one time that made you realize that America really messed you up? Okay, I have another one. Um, when I was studying in Spain, we had our orientation the first week of classes um, and our program director sat us all down and had to explain our health insurance to us and how it worked and basically it worked that you paid like a thousand euro for the semester and you've got it sounds like a lot like free health insurance for everything covered everything yeah. um and she had to sit us down and she had this big group of americans in a room and she was like listen if you are sick go to the doctor go to the doctor yeah <laughs> and we were all like 
That's how we do it here. If your pinky hurts, you go to the doctor. If your throat is slightly scratchy, you go to the doctor. If you have diarrhea, you run to the doctor. Because they might give you something. They might help you. They might not. But it's free. It's a hobby. It's every European's hobby. Running to the doctor with everything. We're paying for it. Health insurance. And then it's covered. So you better use it. <laughs> yes. And she was like, no, like, Americans don't go to the doctor. You won't go to the doctor when you're sick. So I have to tell you every year to do this and still kids will just put off going to the doctor because you're used to just like pushing through illness no yeah, matter what it is. My wife is still doing that. Uh, she's covered and uh, sometimes she's sick and she's like, I don't want to go. It feels wrong. But no, it's not, man. So I think these are some of the main culture shocks that are very normal if you come to Europe as an American or vice versa. And uh, yeah, that was fun to watch. And uh, let me know what you think about that stuff. We'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.